I'm enjoying myself. Half of these are fake, which I'm sorry to tell you. Anyways, hello. Um, today I'm doing a little bit of tag catch up. This is a tag I was tagged in last summer by Brittany at Literarily Smitten, which is always a um, channel name I have problems saying because mouth words. But anyways, I really, really loved the concept of this tag. So I definitely like tagged it to make sure that I got to it at some point. The tag is um, the time and place tag. So basically this is not your normal tag where you have like 10 questions that you answer um, with a book answer. It's basically just you talk about 10 books that you have very specific associations with um, a specific time and place. Uh, yeah, so this really struck my fancy because I feel like it's like a way to talk about how literature can fit into your daily life, but it's not really so prescriptive as like the normal tag videos. So I have a couple answers. I mean, like I have 10 books to talk about here. Um, overall, I've actually found while preparing for this tag that it turns out that books I really, really, really like, I don't have very specific associations with specific times and places because I think like I read it the first time and then I either reread it or I like think about the concepts in it enough that it sort of becomes dissociated with that first um, encounter, I guess. Uh, so these books sort of, some some of them are, are very good. Some of them are not my favorite books. This tag is really in a lot of ways more about me than it's about the books. So I, I guess go into it forewarned. Um, so anyways, I have 10 books to talk about. These range from books that I read in college on, mainly because I have a really horrible memory. So anything before college, I'm like, what happened? I was a child. <laughs> Who knows? Anything could have happened. Did I read? Was I literate? That being said, I did organize them in chronological order. We're, we're starting in college with Metamorphosis from Franz Kafka. Um, so this is a book that I read my first summer where I did research at the college over the summer. Uh, and I was like, I'm, I'm gonna read literary things this summer because I'm, I'm stuck here. <laughs> and it's a small college town in the summer, so literally nothing's happening. So the, the town had like a one room library that I would get books out of, one of which was Metamorphosis. And for some reason, this is the book to me that I really think of when I think of that summer. The main other thing that I think of about that summer is just like how goddamn hot it was because it was like rural Massachusetts, humid. It was like a heat wave all summer. So it was like 90s and above. And we were in this dorm that was just like floor to ceiling windows. I think it was supposed to be I don't know, a nice dorm during the winter when it's like snowy out and you can look out and it's like, ah, the lake with snow or whatever. But during the summer, it was just like unbearably hot, like, like called Child Protective Services hot. But I mean, I guess I was not a child because I was a college student, but I still felt like a child at that point in time. Anyways, so that's that's sort of like when I think what I think of when I think of this book is just the weird, oppressively hot summer that I spent in Western Massachusetts. Yes, does that link back to the actual topic of this book at all? Oh, here comes a dog with a cone. Oh, <laughs> oh, you gotta go. I'm sorry you can't be in this one. Okay, <laughs> She uses her cone like a battering ram. Oh, oh. Hi. Hey. All right, bed. Scoop, scoop that ass up. Good girl. Metamorphosis as a book. Um, basically, as you guys probably know, this is a book that's basically about um, a man who wakes up one day and has found that he's been transformed into a bug, maybe a cockroach of some sort. And it's just sort of like, I don't know, the absurdities of consciousness and society and life. And honestly, that summer I did feel sort of like a bug or some sort of just like unhappy small creature. I mean, I, I was happy in the general sense, but just like physically uncomfortable. Anyways, 
I don't know why that's such a distinctive memory, but it is. There will be sounds in this video of Michelle just knocking her cone on things, including me, apparently. We're just gonna do part of the video like this because I don't got all the time in the world. Okay, so the next book is also a book I read in college. It's A Visit from the Goon Squad, which I remember really liking, even though I don't quite remember a lot about the plot, but my very distinctive like time and place memory of this is that I read this in January and it was J term at college and it was senior year and I had just turned 21 and I rented a zip car and I it was snowing and I drove up to my favorite um, bookstore in Western Massachusetts called the Montague Book Mill, which I've taken guys on vlogs previously. Um, so go check those out. I mean, if you're in Western Massachusetts, please go check out the Montague Book Mill yourself because it is like my favorite place. It was actually my favorite place. I just have this, this memory of driving up in the snow. I'm from California. So that was, oh my God. <laughs> Anyways, um, so it was uh, snowing and I drove up and I'm from California, so I've never driven in the snow. So that was like a whole thing of itself. Um, and then I just like walked around the book mill for a while and then they have like a little restaurant bar next to it. And I had just turned 21. So I sat by myself with a beer and this book for like four hours. And I was like, ah, this is adulthood. This is what I've been waiting for my entire life. So that is a very specific fond memory of this book. So it's about a, a aging punk, punk rocker named Benny and um, his employee who has some uh, troubles of her own in her past and it's sort of about their relationship as they age. Um, and it's, it's like definitely a book that takes place over a long period of time. Um, and it also plays with form uh, quite a bit if I remember correctly. Uh, so yeah, I actually would, give that book a reread, I think. Um, but I really enjoyed that. And again, it's just like a very fond memory of, I don't know, feel, feeling autonomous and be, being an adult and like make, making good decisions and hanging out by myself. So next up we have uh, Jory Graham's poetry. I couldn't really pick a collection or anything. So I'll just put a random collection here. Um, but this is something that I read again, my last semester in college, I took modern American poetry along with a whole bunch of science courses. And it just really, I don't know, I feel like it affected the way that I felt that last semester. Like for Jory Graham specifically, I have this memory of sitting again in my, um, uh, college's library and there's like this little anti-chamber off the main reading room that's like sort of secluded and I was like for some reason I decided to take quantum mechanics that semester which is like don't do that second semester senior year I took I took quantum mechanics instead of the microbiology of beer brewing for some reason like young Emma making bad life choices but I did do that and I was like very much struggling with like conceptualizing quantum because like, er. anyways, so I, I just have this very distinctive memory of like sitting in this like library, cozy library room on a Sunday, switching off in between my quantum textbook and Jory Graham's poetry. And there was just this like, like cosmic moment for like five seconds where somehow, like I was like so deep into like the quantum stuff and the Jory Graham stuff. I just felt like I for a second actually understood quantum and like the way the universe is built for like five seconds. I'm not, I'm not saying I actually did. This is just a feeling that I had anyways. So that was like a very sort of fun, like, literature and science burr, 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 moment for me. And I remember it very specifically. So I thought I would throw this on here, even though I worry it's going to make me sound like even more of a pretentious asshole, but here we are. Okay. And then next up we have Open City by Teju Cole. And this is a book that I read right after college. Um, at this point, I was actually very proactively trying to start reading for pleasure more again. So I was in the process of reading a lot of short books, including this one. Um, and I remember this one very specifically um, because it was like 
I was reading it while I was staying in this first sublet that I had in Boston. And like my Boston apartments were sort of a series of unfortunate events, but it was really nice because I was like living with my friends and it was like, ah, we're doing it. We're, we're out here living our lives. Um, but I specifically remember this uh, book because it's basically about this guy who's like walking around New York at night all the time. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do the same thing. So I just like, I mean, we didn't really have like a lot of money that summer. So me and my roommates would just constantly walk around JP, which is the neighborhood that we were living in. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I just sort of felt like it had some parallels, but then I, I have very conflicting feelings about this book. It's a very slow book for the majority. You're just sort of in this guy's head as he's walking around New York and reflecting on his like life and education and like philosophy and like, like talking to old professors and like, like, I don't know, running into people, having like chance encounters. Um, but it's, it's a very slow philosophical 120 pages or however long it is. Um, but then like, in the end, you find out something that really changes how you feel about the main character. And like, I decided at that point that I hated it. I was like, Michelle, Michelle. Oh my god. Hi. Or you just want to stand here. Okay. So at, at that point, I basically was like, I'm done. I hate this book. I can't believe I read this whole book. But then I really spent, I don't know, years after reading this book, thinking about it. So... I don't, I don't really know where I come down on it in the end. Like it, it definitely made me think it's, it's definitely one of those things. I think I rated this like three stars on Goodreads, which does it a disservice because I feel like it should either be a one star or a five star. Uh, but it, it really just sort of gets to this, uh, thing where it's like, okay, you can't actually rate literature about how you feel about it because you can, you can hate something, but it can still be affecting and important and stuff like that. So that's definitely this book for me. The next book is Bad Feminist. This is a book that I read at the end of my time in Boston. Um, I had just finished up my job. I actually read it while I was in Malaysia visiting a friend. And, you know, I feel like books that you read when you travel are very distinctively books that you read while traveling in your brain because like, like your environment is so different. But I just remember reading this in Malaysia sort of a weird place because like I, I was just hanging out with this friend most of the time I was doing some touristy stuff but you're mainly like hanging out in her apartment complex and like hanging out in malls because that's what um people mostly do when you're just sort of like trying to find a place to spend your Saturday uh so that's very much where I read this book but I think that the fact that I was reading it while I was in Malaysia like any book or piece of nonfiction that's sort of about the shortcomings of like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. We're fine. Everything's fine. Oh, wait, sorry. I have this book. You know, basically when you're reading anything about American culture and politics and social organization and you're abroad, I feel like that's sort of a very specific feeling because you're already sort of like, observing how things are different elsewhere you're a fish out of water to use a cliche you know like like you don't really necessarily normally notice the water that you're swimming in until you're out of it so like you know being abroad and reading stuff about the u.s i think is is like a very specific feeling not that this is all about the u.s this is um basically cultural criticism and i had some political commentary about uh feminism and um tv and books and i don't know privacy and scrabble and like there's a lot of really great essays in here um so i highly recommend reading this but yes it reminds me of malaysia that's all okay next book is how architecture works um and i swear i had this but apparently i don't because i can't find it um, but basically, this is a nonfiction work about, you know, what, what happened in mid-century architecture. Like, I feel like brutalist architecture and a lot of the, the modernist architecture movements have gotten a lot of um, hate on the internet in general. Uh, so I found this really informative. The reason that it's on this list is I specifically picked it up right when I first moved to New York. Uh, and, 
it had a lot of text about like designing skyscrapers, which I hadn't ever thought about before. You know, they're just like <laughs> rectangular blocks sticking into the sky, but it had a lot of text about like the design choices people make about architecture. So I definitely like remember sitting out on the East River reading this book and oh my God, Michelle. Okay, here's a pillow. Here's your wrap up. All right, lie down. Lie down. <laughs> down. I'm being very, very hardcore stared at. We're not, we're not happy. There is some discontent in this household. Anyways, I was talking about how architecture works. And I think, I think that was basically it. I, I just like very much associated it with being new to the city and like, like helping me look at buildings in a different way than I had before. Um, and I still, you know, actually like think a lot about like brutalist architecture in a sort of fond way now. Like I think, I think some of the structures that people made in the 50s, 60s, 70s are quite interesting to look at. I don't know. That's uh, an unpopular opinion, I think. And then number five is Five Days at Memorial. This is a book about Hurricane Katrina and the response in this hospital in downtown New Orleans called um, Memorial Hospital. And this is like one of my favorite books. It's, it's like definitely a favorite of mine. So maybe my thing about like favorites and associating it with a specific time and place is like totally, totally wrong. But anyways, I very specifically associate this book with a department retreat that I took when I was in grad school. Um, so it was in sort of like a, an upstate uh, New York type resort place. Um, and I was like halfway through when we went and I was like reading on the bus up and like all throughout the week I, I didn't want to talk to anybody or do anything I just wanted to sit on the porch and read and it, it was like pouring a lot of the time so I, I just have a very distinctive memory of like sitting on the porch in like big old Adirondack rocking chair type of thing reading this book being antisocial it was it was a great week next up I have crazy rich Asians um <laughs> talk, talk about going from a high to a low but Basically, I have like a whole genre of book that I very much associate with taking bus or train rides from Boston to New York and back because um, that's a trip that I made a lot over the last, you know, decade. So this is a book that I read on the bus from um, New York to Boston. And I remember it very distinctively because I read the first like 20 or 30 pages and I was like, oh, I hate this. Like, this is awful. <laughs> And I was stuck with it. I was stuck with it the whole time. So anyways, I write, read it. I rated it one star. I think that this makes a much better movie than book, but basically it's about a woman. I don't remember her name. She's an economist or an economy professor. She has a, a happy, loving partner that she's like very into. They go visit his family in Singapore and it turns out that he's like incredibly wealthy. But most of this book is just describing like, oh, she was wearing Chanel, but it was like a more special version of Chanel. I, I feel it's just like, it's just like rich person porn. It's like, like, let's just spend pages and pages describing luxury which is so boring like this it was so boring and it, it translated great to screen because like you can do that and like there's about a two-hour movie worth of plot in this and then the rest of it is just like luxurious things and beautiful people and blah blah blah, blah. so yeah it it translated great but i hated it um but yeah and then also i think basically after this trip i switched from the bus to the train because taking the train back and forth in between Boston and New York is much, much nicer than taking a bus back and forth. I had some bad experiences on the bus. I don't want to talk about it. And the next book is Song of Achilles, which is a train book. This is a book that I read on the train from Boston to New York. Um, for some reason, I have like much better memories of books that I've read on transit. Like I had like a whole genre of books that I could have done for this tag that was like, oh, I read this one on Caltrain. Oh, I read this one when I was like on that bus to Portland. 
oh, you, you know, that, that sort of thing. I don't know why I remember those so much more clearly than like something I'm reading in my apartment. But anyways, I read this on the train between Boston and New York. I remember that distinctively because when I started reading it on the train, I was already like, like most of the way through. And it was a train that left at like 10 p.m. And it arrived in New York at like 3 a.m. And I was just sitting on this train where everybody was sleeping, quietly sobbing for like an hour at 1 a.m. in the morning as we went through the New England countryside. So that's my main memory of this book and that place. So it's about Achilles and Patroclus and um, the Trojan War and their relationship. And I actually have no idea how people describe this book because that was a horrible description. But I feel like if you're on booktube and you haven't seen this book yet, I don't know, just, just read it. Finally, last book, number 10, is In the Woods, which I know I own, but I cannot find. In the Woods was an early pandemic read for me. So that is definitely a very specific time and place. I feel like if I were to pick books that bring up early pandemic, it would be In the Woods and Recursion. But I loved In the Woods and I hated Recursion, so we're going to talk about In the Woods. I think I read In the Woods in the beginning of April 2020. Um, I had actually, you know, read other books in the pandemic at that point because we were two weeks in and what else are you going to do? Uh, but I just like, I, I don't know, it was the book where the whole situation really sunk in for me. And I think that two weeks in, it was like, oh, this isn't a two week quarantine. This is going to be like a whole thing. Um, so I remember just sort of like really sinking into this one. And it was the first one that really fully took me out of the current situation. So I very much associate it with uh, early pandemic reading in bed at 2am because like, why get up for work tomorrow anyways, which is a little bit of a depressing note to end on. But I, I guess the pandemic has been a very specific uh, time and way to read. So I feel like it it's like justified to have a pandemic book on this list. So that's it. That's the list. Uh, I am obviously very off the cycle with this tag. It's been like six months since I've been tagged. So I'm going to go and look up people that have not done this yet. I'll tag them in the description box. If this tickles your fancy, please Please do it. Consider yourself tagged. Um, but I'll, I'll find some specific people. And as always, you should also go, you know, give their channels a follow because I, I always pick people for tags that I love and I love their content and stuff. So just, you know, go, go explore some more booktube. That's it for today. And I will see you next week with another video. Bye. Luxurious description of luxurious people and beautiful... <laughs> I don't know why I went into a Trump voice.